Father, I stand before you with a heart filled with mixed emotions. Having recently witnessed you officiate my traditional wedding ceremony and make the effort to travel to witness your grandson's dedication a few days ago, my father wasn't the conventional role of a patriarch, but was also, as many say, my first love. As the first daughter, I had the privilege of experiencing his guidance in matters of both heart and life in general. Your wisdom, woven into the fabric of our family, became particularly evident as he stood before us, not just as a father, but as a leader, a provider, beacon of hope, and enduring close friends. Your presence radiated not just paternal warmth, but deep understanding of love, gratitude, humility, determination, and not just the good that life brings, but also on matters of sadness, loss, betrayal, and failure. As I navigate the path ahead, let your spirit continue to guide, ensuring that the flame of fatherhood you carry remains alive in my heart, and may it be evident that you live a life of meaning and pursuant to your purpose. A thousand words can bring you back, I know, because I have tried. And neither will a million tears, I know, because I am still crying. I will miss you, Father. Thank you for all that you are. Haribuni Mali. Na shukuru sana kwa kuja kusherekea pamoja maisha ya baba yangu. Na kwa wengi wanaongea kuhusu maisha yake. Pia daktari akisoma lakini mimi ningependa kusema kwa baba mzuri. Na nitasoma hii niki kumbuka la mkoa mzuri kwetu. Hazai hona the memory of my beloved father, a man whose presence illuminated my world. I share reflections on a life that profoundly shaped my own. My father was more than a dad. He was a prophet. He was a mentor. He was a friend, a teacher, and a counselor. He was the architect of our family's foundation, crafting it with principles of love, resilience, and unwavering support. I witnessed, yes, I witnessed how, you, how your sacrifices and relentless, relentless dedication to providing us with a life of experience and, and endless opportunities. Your lessons transcended the ordinary. They were a blend of wisdom and compassion. Whether imparting advice over shared lauta or guiding with a silent strength during challenges, challenging times. Your influence was a steady hand shaping the man I have become. As a father, you are you aren't defined solely by the responsibility you shouldered, but by the moments you created. From story, stories to invaluable life lessons. Your presence was a source of security and warmth. Beyond the walls of our home, you extend your love to the community, fostering a spirit of generosity and kindness. Your legacy isn't just confined to the family. It resonates in the lives you touched as witnessed around here, reflecting a commitment to making the world a better place. As I bid you farewell, Dad, I carry forward the touch of your life, of your values, your unyielding love, and the lessons that will forever echo in my heart. Though you may no longer walk beside us, your spirit lives on in the echoes of the shared lauta, the resonance of your guidance, and enduring love that beats, binds us as a family. I'll give a friend to read my tribute. The Lord God bless you for coming to be with us. Uh, his 
salmon moment, I gather to pay tribute to a remarkable man, a devoted husband who graced my life for 34 years. In your copy, it is written that he has a correction to make 34 years. Our journey was a tapestry woven with threads of love, resilience, and shared experiences that define the very essence of life well lived. As I reflect on the chapter of your life, I'm reminded of the profound love that flourished over three decades. Through the eyes and lows, the laughter and the tears, you stood as a pillar of strength, embracing the responsibilities of marriage with an unwavering commitment. The deep bond forged in the crucible of time reflects a love that weathered storms and celebrate triumphs, leaving an indelible mark on each art you touched. Your legacy extends beyond the confines of earthly extents, echoing in the laughter of shared moments, the warmth of your embrace and the wisdom you impacted. In the depth of memories, I find solace for your spirit resigns in the love that binds us together. I'm not mourning your passing, but instead celebrating the profound impact you had on my life. As I say my farewell, I carry forward the lessons learned, the moments and the enduring love that will forever connect us. We vowed before men and God to walk hand in hand, from better or worse, in good and in bad, in sickness and in health, in life until death. Do us part. Uh, I am honored to read this eulogy for this great man, my uncle. My name is Gashiri Kimasi. Well, uh, Dr. Reverend Moses was born in January 1st, 1962, in Gadundori village in Manyata, in Bo County. He was the son to the late Amashan Dweka in the 1979, and later he at Kangaroo High School, Embu, from 1980 to 1982. The late Reverend Jewel then joined the University of Nairobi Medical School in 1983, attaining a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, MBCHP, in 1988. He would then return to the same university in 1991 for the master's program, graduating with a Master of Medicine in Clinical Pathology in 1995. In 1995, he left, for the, he left the country for Japan where he attended the Tokaya University Medical School to undertake work in anti-genetic typing of Kenyan non-Hodgkin informants mass pathology, which he completed in 1996. Later in 2005, he attended the Stenbosch University, South Africa, attaining a diploma in forensic pathology in 2006, and then became a member of the Colleges of Medicine of South Africa. In 2014, Dr. Reverend Joe became a fellow of the College of Pathologies of East, Afri East, Central, and Southern Africa. The late, the late Dr. Reverend Joe was a firm believer in advancing the body of knowledge, especially in his field pathology and forensic pathology. For this reason, he taught the world attending numerous conferences, seminars, trainings, and workshops, including, but not limited to, molecular biology certificates, Egypt, 1998, International Congress of Pathology, Japan, October 2000, Diploma in Cancer Prevention, USA, 2001, International Gastrointestinal Pathology Congress, Israel, January 2002.
sickness and demise. The late Dr. Raymond Joy enjoyed a healthy life until 2021. He has been on condition management until he was promoted to glory on Wednesday, 8th November at 4 a.m. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the fight. Second Timothy 4 7. Daktari, we've heard from the classmates, from the workmates, and from the rest that Daktari was such a hard worker, especially in education. And I want us to take that as a challenge and as a, and as a lesson to us, the community, especially of Betty South. And I want to speak specifically to Betty South. Last three we did assessments, and I'm, I'm sure Moshimiwa would agree with me, that Betty Kiambere, which is a half of Betty, has more students in the university than Betty South. It's a very sad thing to be. And my prayer is that we shall not take anything else and assume it is better than education. At the end of it all, we are celebrating this man of God. We are seeing people from across the nation having traveled to come and celebrate with us the life of Dr. Terry for only one reason, because God raised him to the highest standards of the highest professional level, and number two, he was a learned person and outgrew the poverty of the community. It is my prayer that we may take it seriously as a lesson today to the parents, those who are allowing children 3 a.m., Mtoto ni washule, but then he is going yadi and akubaliwa kwenda kuchuna mwoka. I am not against mwoka. But I'm saying let mwoka contribute to our education. Amen? If it doesn't, then it doesn't serve the purpose of our community of better self. And I will say this it again. If we don't use it as a resource to develop our community, so that at the end of it, we become the most educated, not only the richest want, but the riches in education, then we are not going to achieve our objective as a community. Transformation will only come through education and spirituality. The final point I want to mention. Daktari stood for integrity. When I decided to go and run for the seat of MP, he called me for coffee and he asked me, Genesio, we've served with you in the ministry of preaching the gospel. But there's a lot of corruption. There are, there's a lot of things that happen in Shiasha. Are you going to stand for the integrity, the values, the virtues of the gospel? And I said, Dr. Tari, you are a mentor to me. You stood when you were government pathologist. I am trusting God I will. It is my prayer today as a better community that you will emulate this man, that in the positions that you get, in the leadership of the community, that leadership will be a leadership that is of this level and this magnitude. A leadership that is godly lent, spiritual leadership. May God rest his soul. Very unfortunate, as I call the MC, eh? Because I'm done. Very unfortunate that sometimes we see the level of corruption in our positions that we get. Within Bere, I hear, and I'm told, and we verified that some leaders give the brother all the tenders, all the, the others are given to the son. The other one are given to the other brother. It is banned, it is unethical, it is a sin, and it should be condemned in Jesus' name. Amen. Sisi ya tuna shinda na ngavana, tunafanya kazi na ngavana wetu, na hatuna hile mambo mingi minasikia kwa manjirani. Tunafanya kazi na ngavana vizuri, na tutangangana, tuone katero simeisha. Tumentuma katero ishe? Tutambia ngavana katero ifanya nini? Ishe ndiye watu wapate mandawa kwa mahospitali sababu hiyo ni one of uh, manifesto ilikuwa imeongea mambo ya, ya, ya ma, mandawa kwa mandakta, kwa mahospitali yetu. Hata tulikuwa na vasi Nikita Senator niseme kuna wakati hatukua wa Kristo wapendwa na hiyo wakati ni wengine walikuwa. 
Sasa hii kila mtu amepewa nafasi mimi nikiwa mheshimiwa wenu kuna bishops kuna klaja wale wengine kuna walimu kama mwalimu wangu Mothero na wale wengine kuna viongozi mbalimbali kila mtu wakati huu huko fanya jambo ambao tutakukumbuka wakati au tutakuwa tutakuwa tunakumbuka dr Joe na mambo mengi Tumepoteza mtu ambaye ni watu wengi walikuwa na peana mvano na yeye. Pia tunamusukuru kwa hile kasi alivanya. Pia na sasa hata mbifuwa kuja kuve. Alikuwa amerete kama tunakumbuka serikali ya Kenya Kwanza. Inasema mambo ya havi ya masinani. Yeye ni mmoja katika uh, mbere, 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 mbere signed. Amenjenga hata mosali hata injaka siku nyingi. Bahali tutakuwa uh, kule masinani tutakuwa tunayona. Kwa hivyo naomba watu wengine kila mtu atafute atafute wacha maka aina gani tunashukuru kwa sababu ingekuwa isipokuwa ni Mungu amemchukua sisi tulikuwa fanya kazi pamoja na yeye na alikuwa tulikuwa nasikia ma, ma, vile alikuwa anatuambia kwa sababu aungewaisha kuwa mnavisana na yeye atiama akiwa kwa watoto akiwa kwa watu wakubwa akiwa wale wamesoma na wale wanja soma aungeweza kumuelewa kwa hivyo tumepoteza mtu ambaye eh, ni mtu mtenda kazi na mtu mwenye laviki kila mmoja kwa hiyo naomba watu wale wamesoma sana na wale wanja soma Tuna, tu, tuseme mambo ya kindini mpaka ingie kwa mavekira kwa sababu hiyo ni kitu monja ilivanya awe lafiki na kila monja.